Right guys, I'm afraid to say this is it. The journey me and the MT10 have been on for the past year, which has been a bloody good laugh the whole time, uh, is over. This is just about to be my final ever ride on her. I'm going to take I'm taking her back to Yamaha, where she's going to go to her lovely owner, who I think has already even bought her. So uh, I think I better be a bit careful on the way back. But um, yeah. Just want to start off by saying thanks for everyone for sticking with me and all this. Thanks for all your questions. Thanks for all your emails. Thanks for getting in touch. Um, and yeah, just don't want to say really, a bit sad. A bit sad. This is going. Yeah, I've got the jigsaw, but you know, it's such a good laugh. It's so much fun that I can't really, uh, <laughs> oh, I can't really think about being without her. But anyway, so we've got a couple of things coming up for you for our final little thing. Um, so just stick with it. Um, but first of all, uh, somebody asked they wanted to see some naughty stuff, which again I can't really do too much because I do this for a living, and you know none of you will come and visit me in prison, will you? But luckily we have a little local hero, El Bandito, if you remember him, and he's done pretty much. He's got different exhausts on the stuff, but he's done pretty much all the same mods that I have. He's followed the blogs. He's put the blipper on and the screen, and you know, I, I don't think he, I'm not sure if he used a power commander or a Zaz, but he's had the fueling done, you know, or he's, he might have had a U, ECU flash, but anyway, so he's a naughty boy, I think. So I'll just, for the second, while I dribble along nice and uh, quiet like <laughs> to Yamaha, uh, I'll leave it to El Bandito for now. Enough of that tomfoolery. Wait, wait, you shut it. Sorry. Trying to do it. Right, enough of that tomfoolery. Okay, uh, one more thing to say, and it's a little bit of a confession, although we didn't really do anything wrong, but we kind of might have done something a little wrong. Just regarding the nitron shock. Now, somebody has pointed this out to me um, already um, that we may have fitted. Uh huh, yeah, this is, this is, see what I've got to work what, uh, see what I have to work with here. Anyway. Yeah, but a bunch. Um, somebody pointed out that we had fitted it wrong. Uh, when I say fitted it wrong, I mean the um, rebound adjuster and the, uh, the gas canister. Um, now, in our defence, when we got the unit, Nitron rushed it out to us and it came in the box with all the stuff we needed, but there were no instructions. Um, now, it did take us a while to go around to fitting it, but when we fitted it, there were still no instructions, so we sat there and kind of put everything you know, together and thought, well, that kind of makes sense. Um, and Nitron themselves said, yes, you can fit it like that, you idiots, but, <laughs> but there is another way of doing it. And I'm going to show you the photos now. And you can see that one thing goes on one side and one thing goes on the other side. Uh, even on the photos, this is a bike with no, uh, it looks like it's got no rear pegs on it. Um, so, you know, this is the neater way of doing it. So apologies for that, but at the same time, if you've got no instructions at all, uh, which Nitron apologised to us for, because again, they've just rushed it out to us as soon as the shock was ready, then it could be seen that if you didn't have the instructions, you would put it together exactly how we did it. That being said, as I've said before, so you guys will know, you know, whilst uh, some people found it disappointing, um, as in the way it looked like that, at the same time, I don't really care what it looks like. I mean, I've been riding a Mac Gray bike round for ages, for God's sake. But um, I don't really care what it looks like as long as it works. And the great thing about the Nitron Shock is it is absolutely brilliant. And I'm not the only one to love it, as you will see in the stuff coming up now that was actually a couple of weeks ago. But you know, so anyway, back to the show. Right, wait, hold the phone, never mind all that wheelie kind of stuff. Uh, I've got one thing to say, and I want to talk to you very quickly about this. Right, this is from Pyramid Plastics. 
okay, and it's to replace uh, the side pods on the MT-10, making them more of one unit. And uh, i got to say, I'm a bit gutted that these arrived about a day after I gave the MT back, which you're kind of about to watch now, but anyway, never mind. Um, here's a picture of them, sat on the bike. Isn't that? Right. I really like them. Um, I've got to say, I really, really like them. I mean, I know I had those Barracuda pods that, um, that covered in uh, the infills, and they were pretty cool, and they were pretty cheap, but that is absolutely brilliant. Now, they're amazing, really, because they're from Pyramid Plastics. They're £240 a pair. They come in grey. They also do the black, gloss black, um, and they, come, they also come uh, unpainted, in case you want to paint them yourself. And it's funny, I think it makes the MT look a little bit more like, I suppose, some other naked bikes, but it definitely, definitely tidies up um, uh, the side. And I think that's amazing. Quite frankly, I'm amazed Yamaha don't do like an official thing like that because um, it's brilliant. Um, they seem they're pretty good quality from what I can see. The colours are pretty much bang on as well. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to interrupt the flow of um, what's his name? Naughty Wheelie Boy. Um, uh, just to show you this quickly because the chances are that I might not get to show you them again, at least not in this context. So there you go, from Pyramid Plastics, some empty 10 side panels. I'm sorry I can't show you guys them on the bike itself, but bike go bye bye, really. Um, and uh, yeah, I think so. What I should probably do now, really is get on with the show. Um, so there we go. Oh, 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 one more thing, one more thing. Um, they also do these in silver to match the MT-10 SP. Okay, so it's not just for the 2016 MT, they're also looking at 2017 colours of the standard MT and also the MT-10 SP. Right, uh, back to the action. Told you, stop that tomfoolery. Okay, there's something else. Um, somebody else has asked somewhere about what upgrades we've done on the bike and to list them. And sorry for the noisy buggers outside. Um, uh, to list the upgrades, even though if you watch back for all the things, you'll see them. So, okay, uh, most important MT10 upgrades. Uh, probably the best one was the Brembo Road and Track pads from Bike HPS because uh, they just turned the brakes into absolute genius when they were a little bit pony to start off with. Um, the SP Engineering CAN and Y piece to start off with um, and then we went to the SP Engineering Diabolus CAN and Y piece and then we put a Power Commander on that uh, went to JHS Racing, put it on a dyno and we went from 139 to 150 horsepower we got uh, 10 horsepower pretty much through the range about 10 newton meters of torque, I mean massive difference so I'll try and chuck the dyno up, be around here somewhere I'll put it up now maybe did you see it? Okay, right. Uh, the Nitron Shock uh, what is brilliant. Uh, prior to that, however, JHS Racing had done a static suspension setup, uh, which you can see in episode six or seven, I forget. Um, now, that actually was brilliant. I mean, and it cost 40 or 50 quid or whatever, and it transformed the bike. Um, and things did get a lot better once we put the Nitron Shock um, on as well. Uh, the other... Uh, modification of note um, is the bike sport development's downshift blipper which is epic I mean even the guy from Yamaha rode my bike and just said oh my god that's amazing um, and yeah uh, it's about 670 quid um, but it's it's an upgraded quick shifter as well um, the, quick shift, the quick shifting action was much better than the, the Yamaha accessory quick shifter which is fine but this one is much better far slicker and the downshift blipper is just oh absolutely sweet. Tyres wise I went for Rosso uh, courses first of all and they were absolutely excellent, had them on track, did loads of miles on the road and to be honest they only quit when I got a nail in the rear tyre. Then I moved on to Bridgestone S21, uh, yes S21s was it? No RS10s, Bridgestone RS10s of course it is, uh, which you'll see a little later on and um, they were just quite different from the Pirellis, not quite as agile but a lot more solid and secure. Um, and the bike just never felt like it was ever going to do anything on it. Although, um, with a different profile and stuff like that, they did change 
the bike, it kind of lifted the, the front up a little bit more, dropped the back down a little bit more. Um, so we kind of readjusted the suspension to put it back to where it was with the Pirellis. And really, that's all the most important upgrades. Yeah, I put a screen on, but mm, whatever. Um, and uh, just trying to think what else. What else do I do? Come on, guys, you've been watching. Help me out here because I'm having a brain fart and I can't think. Um, but those are the most, I would say those are the most important ones, the ones I've mentioned there. So for anyone who hasn't watched the other videos or has can't be bothered to watch the other videos, that list I've just said there is, is the, the essential items to turn uh, the MT-10 into something even more special than it already is. Right, this time 100% back to the show. Bye. Oh, it's still recording, isn't it? <laughs> it's gone well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hi guys, right, um, worst final ride ever because the schools are out and it was really, 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 really busy. Now, um, I said that was it, but I kind of lied a little bit because we're going to do something special here. As you can see, we've got my bike here with all the modifications and then we've got the MT-10 SP. Now, I believe my bike is better than that bike. So anyway, to find that out, I've got a couple of guys here and Ladies and gentlemen, the first rider, he's back by popular demand. Oh. It's Mr. Johnny Gawler. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm so going to put some applause over that because we've missed him <laughs> so much. Now, Johnny, Johnny definitely represents the conservative side of things. Um, so what I needed was a tit. Um, Dave. Morning. This is my mate Dave. You ride like a twat pretty much, don't you, Dave? Some say, yeah. Some say. Okay, well, that'll do. So we've got, one end, we've got both ends of the spectrum here. So the boys are going to go out. We're going to have some fun, and then they're going to decide which wins. But it's obviously going to be my MT-10, isn't it? Apart from maybe looks. Anyway, chat about later. Enjoying the down blipper there? It's done a tiny little wheelie. You never did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> it must have been. It must have been about this much for about three quarters of a second. Do, doesn't it just feel <laughs> like it comes up and you're like, oh! It was just like, right, I'm I'm gonna just relax and just turn this until I feel weirdness, yeah. and I, I managed to do it. And it did feel pretty weird. Well, it's, this this is the MT10 thing though. This is why they just. They're just crazy, crazy things. And Yamaha, again, they, they didn't make this to be super quick around a track or whatever. They made it to be fun. You know, this is what you're discovering. And you don't do wheelies, do you? No. Johnny, John, come here, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Well, well done. This is better than Gamma <laughs> Dave, what's your first impressions of the SP? It's just amazing. It's, it's like nothing I've ever ridden before. You sort of jump on it and think, like, right, OK, you can tell this is the top, top whack sort of... Mm. Geez, oh, even, even a tiny little crack of the throttle and the front's just... <whistles> you, you just can't help it. And that's in first, second, that, that, third? That's, no, yeah. that's, in, that's first, second, third, fourth. <laughs> you, you get like a sniff in fifth. <laughs> I know. It and it's just like, you get so much feedback from the bars because they're nice and wide. Mm -hmm. You can really sort of feel where it's trying to go. But it's having, having that slip of clutch on it as well, my God. You like that? It's, oh, it's like a godsend. I mean, I was, I was riding behind Johnny, um, coming back through the villages and that, and my only bugbear with it was like, oh, I wish it made a bit more noise. Oh. I'm, I'm just looking at Johnny going, <laughs> that sounds so, so good. <laughs> it's too much for you, isn't you, it? You can have it. It's just so, it's rude. It's impolitely noisy. It? <laughs> it, the only way I could describe that is possibly being kicked in the head and then some. Because it's just mental. Mm. It's this is why this is why we love, love MTs. Now, are there any downsides to the bikes you've been riding so far? I'll start with you, Dave. Um, I can't fault too much on it. I mean, for me, the the electronic suspension on it is is great. Like a couple of times when we stopped at the junctions, I just played about with the uh, played about with the settings and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it soaks up the bumps and takes out like the B road uh, the B road sort of bumps and lumps and whatever it is, it takes it really well, yeah. but you do feel everything, mm -hmm. like it's, it's almost like if you go over it 
your back end, your front end sort of like just floats over it and the back end's like, oh, oh you, you, feel, you feel like you can, I, I feel like my spine's trying to escape through the top of my back. And you did mention throttle response earlier. The throttle response, my God, it's just, it's either on or off. Mm. There's, there's no happy medium. Is it, is it a fly-by-wire throttle on this? It is, and it is, it is a quirk of the MT is, it can have quite a bit of a snatchy throttle. Yeah. Now that can actually be ironed out like I've done on this one. Johnny, apart from the obvious one, any, is there anything you don't like about this at the moment? Um, no. Wow. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I even like the screen. Oh, you do? Incredibly. Oh god, mine needs a screen. <laughs> it really, really needs a screen. <laughs> what, for, on the motorway? Coming down the motorway, um, I can see Johnny's sitting there. He's, he's, he's obviously going straight up over the top of his head. I'm crouched <laughs> right down, trying to get behind the clocks. Like, <laughs> It was like trying to pull my head off. Yeah, no, he's right actually. I, I actually did a journey up to Lincolnshire not long ago and I rode up on a, a Tuono, mm. which is a little bit, you're a little bit more push forward and it has yeah, a yeah. tiny little bikini thing. Uh, on the way back, I rode an MT10 SP, but it actually took me 40 minutes longer to get back on the Yamaha simply because you're so, it's got a very mm. upright riding position and I was like a sail, so I get that. but. As first impressions go, guys, I think this is quite impressive. Mm, oh, it's phenomenal. Are you ready to swap places? Yeah, I'll need some noise in my life. Johnny? Uh, it sounds like I'm not going to gain very much, apart from a nice quiet life, by, <laughs> by going on that. Because this is so nice. The throttle response is like this. It's got a screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, oddly, if you, if you crouch behind the screen, you get weird like turbulence and noises. Whereas if you just sit there, <laughs> Like an idiot, like I normally do anyway. It's fabulous. Um, suspension's nice. Mm -hmm. It's choppy on these bumpy roads. It, it but it's will got be. a soft edge to it. It is, but I have had a kind of racy ish setting put to it. But I mean, the Nitron Shock is superb. It's really good. It is a, it's, it's a bit firm, but it's got, a lovely, it's got a lovely stroke to the firmness, I would say. So you're, so you're really looking forward to getting on mine. Yeah. And you're not so bothered about getting on that. Win, win so far for Beach's MT. When was the first time I rode an MT10? It's uh, a, a bit of a story actually, because um, it was this MT10, my long-term bike, and Rootsy had picked it up from Yamaha and taken it home, and I rode to meet him uh, to sort of bikes. And when I met him, he wouldn't let me ride it, and he said, oh, no, you need to come with me, when I was a little bit confused. Anyway, and he took me to um, a road which used to be a main A road, but has now been surpassed by a dual carriageway A road, but it's still there as a relief road, and he took me on it, and it's literally two miles of dead, dead straight road. And he pulled to the side, and he went, there you go, there's your long-termer, I want you to just go and ride down there, which, anyway. So I got on the MT-10, I pulled away, by 20 miles an hour, it was on one wheel. I put it down in fifth gear at a, a speed so obscene, I'm not gonna mention it right here, right now. And then I did exactly the, the same thing on the way back. And I stopped and Simon said, see, I knew you'd do that. I knew you'd do that straight away. And my, the point being, the MT-10 is so, intuitive if you've got on one of the softer throttle modes it's so intuitive it just happens and and when it goes up it's it doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel like it's going to flip it's got a lovely balance point to the point where even someone like Johnny Gawler who has never done a wheelie in his entire life today has done a wheelie and that is the great thing about the MT10 it might not be the most sportiest naked you can buy but it is probably the most fun you could have on two wheels. A little bit like most of Yamaha's MT range, to be, to be fair. It, every single one, the seven, the nine, the 10, they're just all hilarious. But yeah, my, my overriding memory of first riding an MT10 for the first time ever will always be that moment where I realized within 100 yards that I was gonna have the year of my life, and I did. Action. Right then, the guys swapped bikes, and it's the first time we've stopped since they've had a go. So, Dave, yes, your first time on my bike. Yeah, how was it? Amazing. It was so much more user friendly. Uh, the mid range was just always there. You could you could bang it even from the off, and you just felt it was 
it, it just wants to lift. It's just <laughs> so easy to be a dick. <laughs> it's it looks fantastic. It's oh, everything for me just does it. You like it? Yes, so much better than the SP in my opinion. Oh what, uh, Johnny? Your first time on the SP? Yep, so I'm on the SP. Um, been looking forward to it for ages with its special bits and little add-on gubbins. Mm -hmm. um, I went straight for mode B, didn't bother with mode A. The guy at Yamaha said the friendly mode is mode B, so I'm straight there. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it really drivable. Uh, the mid-range is massive, mm -hmm. but it's not a fierce delivery. It's not, a, it's not a sudden step in the delivery as you go up. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much power there, so much, so much torque from 3000 onwards that you can just get on with it and enjoy it. Do you like suspension? Um, we didn't do such bumpy roads as uh, when I was on your bike. Okay. Um, but it's magic carpet ride. Thanks, right, one modification I haven't mentioned yet that is actually really important is the tyres on my bike. The SP comes on Bridgestone's S20. Now, it's an OE S20, so it's not exactly the same S20 as you'd buy in the shops. Mm. It's a tyre designed specifically for the MT10 and the MT10 SP. It's actually pretty good, we've had it on track, we've done it on the road, it's good, but what I have on my bike are Bridgestone RS10s. Now that's a proper sporty tyre you'll find on a lot of kind of big bikes. Have you guys noticed anything at all since you've been riding? Have you noticed a slightly better purchase on my bike, for example? Phil? I, I feel a lot more confident leaning it over, just it feels so much more planted when you're going around the corner. Like there were a few sections mm -hmm. back in the village where you could really sort of get a lean on, crack open a bit more throttle and it just felt like it was sticking, it felt like glue to the road. Yeah, well that's funny enough, when I stuck them on that's how I felt. I had a, a different set of tyres on before that were actually a touch more agile than those, yeah. but they just feel like they're not going to go anywhere. No, they don't, they feel so planted, it's like you can't sing their praises high enough. No. Johnny? Uh, your ones would just forget about it, you're not going to trouble them. Um, whereas I, I put down the weird kind of squirminess of these to the mm -hmm. fact that they're literally brand, brand new, new tyres and I'm, I'm always, well I'm scared of brand new bikes to start with but a brand new bike on brand new tyres, that's yeah. going to be pretty on the glass. No, that's fair enough, that's fair enough, but it is, you know, again that's a £250 modification that can make, I mean tyres can make a huge a difference, world of difference, a world of to, to mm. any bike, even if the bike's 20 years old, a set of tyres can, can do it. Okay good, right, so a uh, few more miles to do and then we're going to go back to Yamaha and then we're going to find out which bike is the best. It's mine. Right, we are now here back at Yamaha, the day is done. Boys, before we crack on with which bike is best, mine, um, did you enjoy yourselves on the MTs? Absolutely fantastic. Really? Yeah, brilliant day. Riding about the Surrey countryside, how could you get any better? Johnny? Yep, what a lovely day, lovely bikes. A mm -hmm. uh, bit trafficy here and there, but nice bit of scenery. Hmm. Hanging out with you guys, lovely. Yeah, it was a bit weird not riding, to be honest with you, but anyway, let's, let's get down to the, the, the meat of it. Right, okay. I'm going to start with looks, all right? Because I think this is one section my bike might lose. Dave, which bike looks better? <sighs> oh, I've been known for my lurid, leery colours. I'm, I'm drawn to different looking things. To me, the SP just looks like another fancy sports bike that walked past in a dealership. I like the fact that it's so edgy looking, the bright wheels stand out for me and it gets my vote. SP, all day long. I think yours looks like a Lego toy. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I can't blame you, I really can't because I, I, I get what you're saying. The SP, my bike, I get what Dave's saying because my bike looks kind of jumbly and it's yeah. interesting like that. But at the same time, the SP almost looks like a normal bike with that paint job on and it does look very smart. I don't think pictures do it justice actually. Mm -hmm. It looks much nicer in the oh, flesh. It's so much better in the flesh. Yeah? It's got a proper race style to it, which I know is completely anathema to what it actually is, mm -hmm. but I just like the combination of race style trick bits and that kind of bike. Okay, okay, right, so next one. Throttle response, Dave. Throttle response on the SP was fantastic. It was, it was always there when you needed it, but for me it was a bit too on or off. Okay. I much prefer your one, where it's been dialed in by JHS because it's just got so much more usable mid-range. You know, you, you're not either uh, uh, like jerking about, but whereas that, it's just smooth and linear all the way through. Yours is very, very good. But, <laughs> there's a but coming. I just like the... Does yours have all the modes that the yeah. SP has? 
Because I only tried yours mm -hmm. in the JHS map okay. one, mm -hmm. which is tremendous fun. Yeah. But day to day, I just could not live with it. Really? Because that is the, that's actually the smoothest map. I, I, do you think perhaps, which brings me on to my next uh, topic, do you think perhaps it's the fact that the bike makes so much more low down and mid range power than the SP? So you get that, whoa, like that. Yeah. Is that what put you off slightly? Um, I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I'd end up running around in a, in a gear higher just to tame the thing. Whereas <laughs> the standard, uh, sorry, mode B uh -huh. on the SP mm -hmm. um, was just so nice, mm -hmm. so usable, and also fun if you, want, if you want it to be. Okay, so engine wise, you're still kind of going towards the SP again? I think I am. Yours is yeah. too much. Too okay, much fair enough, Dave. I, for me, because I like to dick about, yeah. I, I like I like usable power on tap that I can just crack it open and go. The SP was fantastic, but it felt too much like a, almost like a car with a turbo lag. Right. It was like yeah, 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 bang, and then it just exploded and took okay. off. Whereas that, like I said, it was just crisp and smooth all the way through, and you could just handle it. It was just ready for knocking down a gear and just pulling it straight up in the air. Right. Okay. Well, we're kind of on as even at the moment, right? Okay. So handling because obviously mine has a fork setup and a rear shock which has raised the rear quite a bit the sp has the electronic suspension dave uh, i'm personally a big fan of the arsen being a little bit taller because it's it tips in nicer mm -hmm. the suspension on the sp you cannot fault it that electronic only stuff is witchcraft mm -hmm. i've not ridden anything like it in in the years that i've been riding bikes However, again, like I said, I'm going to lean more towards yours because it just did tip in that little bit better. It soaked up the bumps a lot better. Mm -hmm. And did the Bridgestone RS10s also have a slight hand in that? They did, yeah. They're they're incredibly planted. You couldn't you couldn't fault the way that it handled around any of the bends. Like it just okay. you threw a bend at it and it just ate it. Fantastic. Like just like nothing was even there. Okay, a good, good one for me, Johnny. Um, the new tyres on the SP, um, I just couldn't get on with them. They, they felt they felt good, but then up to a point. <laughs> Beyond that, they felt um, just odd. Yeah. Um, not really squirmy, but just are they going to let go? Uh, whereas yours, fabulous. Your suspension setup, fabulous. You like um, the suspension on, on? Suspension, yeah, cracking. It, it was firm. Um, Obviously, it has to look after all that power, mm -hmm. um, but it had a little compliance to it. Um, so, set up beautifully, um, a non cracking pair of tyres. Wow, that's JHS James, that. Right, okay, so I'm slightly in the lead here. <laughs> Final one, boys. I think I know what's going to win here. Noise, Johnny. Yours is too loud. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's like, what's the best noise, it's going to be yours. Um, the bike that still that sounds pretty good, the SP, though, right? Um, the thing is, the noise from your exhaust kind of hides all the kind of sewing machine-y top end noise. I kind of said this earlier, didn't we? Yeah, so if you, because it, after being on yours, mm. going to the SP with its, it's got a flip-on cam, but mm -hmm. the, the noise it just isn't there. So you get a lot of mechanical, um, kind of trebly noise from the top of the engine. Yeah. Um, it's not all that pleasant, to be honest, so, yours sounds nicer. Dave? <laughs> Again, I completely agree with what Johnny said. Um, Although it does have that Acker slip on, it's it's not loud enough for me. Right. I mean, I the main selling point for me is I love a bike that's got a soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, as you know, I purchased my Triumph. Yeah. Love the triple noise coming out of that. It's got a set of uh, Leo Vintage GPs on it. I took the baffles out, got maybe in 10 minutes up the road from my house, had to turn back around and go and put them back in again. It was <laughs> deafening. Whereas the MT's just got that fruity burble to it. Mm -hmm. Like you can you can knock it down on the downshift, and it just pops and bangs on the overrun. It just sounds phenomenal. So guys, I think if I if my very rough, crappy mathematical scores in my head are right, we are saying that. Start that one again. Oh, cool. so I've got the right. Yeah. So, train. Crazy train. So guys, if I've got this right and my really crappy, terrible maths in my head are correct. That means that my MT10, with mods on, that still makes it cheaper than the SP. In fact, in fact, if you buy a brand new MT10 and still put the shock, the setup, the power commander, the bike sport developments, up and down shift lipper on, it will still be cheaper than the SP. And we are saying that it is better than the flagship MT10, the SP. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion, it is it's, that wins hands down for me. I'd go for the SP. 
It's got it's got the magic carpet suspension. Uh -huh. It's got those letters as B after the name. It's got that crap. <laughs> it does. Blee, blee bits. But technically speaking, including a vote from you, You're mine got more votes. You, you got more votes, yeah. But so technically speaking, with more votes, because this is how voting works, it is the winner, right? And on that bombshell. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is he coming back? I think we can just nick his bike now, can't we? Yes! Get the van ready. Right, the time has come for me to hand my key back to Yamaha, and it's a pretty sad day. But before I did that, I just wanted to speak to Mr. Jeff Turner here from Yamaha um, about the MT range in general, because I think it's fair to say, Jeff, that for a few years we were wondering what Yamaha was doing, and then all of a sudden you came out with one MT, then another MT, then another MT, and each and every one seems to be bigger and better than the last. Just how much has the MT range turned Yamaha's fortunes around recently? Oh, completely. And Yamaha were, you know, pretty low ebb really in sort of 2011, 2012, into the beginning of 13. Mm -hmm. End of 2013, we got the MT09, mm -hmm. instant hit, massive change. Then very quickly we came with MT07, MT125. Now we've got MT10 and so forth, and it now accounts across Europe for almost 40% of Yamaha's total European sales. That's the MT range. Wow. So it has transformed the business. And does this also include, obviously, because the CP2 and CP3 engine have been repurposed into your tracer ranges as, as well. So you've, you've almost taken the, the essence of the MT, which is the engines, and put them to good use elsewhere. Yeah, I think people have to understand how big an investment it is for a factory to build a brand new engine. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to update an engine, to change it, to even change firing orders, but to build a brand new blank piece of paper to an engine is a massive investment. Mm -hmm. So the MT range not only signalled a new range for Yamaha, but a new design and engineering philosophy. So what it basically means is that the investment in the engines must be recouped by using it as what we call a platform base. So that engine needs to be useful in two or three other models. So as you say, the MT-07, which you see over there, yeah. that has spawned the XSR 700 retro bike, and it's also spawned the Tracer 700, mm -hmm. and will in the future spawn other models based around the same engine. And that's the only way now that you really can have a, an engine. And of course, those engines need to be future-proofed, Euro 4, Euro 5 down the road. So it's a big, big investment. Yeah, and you've not rested on your laurels either. You didn't just create these bikes and then have them going for five years as is, because I know the MT-09 has been updated. Obviously, the MT-10 was out one year, and you've updated it and added more stuff to it as well. Um, is this something we're going to see happen with MTs, literally on a quite a regular basis, do you think? When you consider the, how big the volume is, mm. then of course that gives you money to reinvest in future model development, so that might be an evolution of a model. So MT-09 got upgraded suspension, it got um, lots of chassis changes, different seating, all the parts, of course, we're getting loads of feedback from the market, mm. so we know what people want to change, so it might be a good base when it came, but actually we've made it better and better, and of course com competition moves on. So you have to keep with the time, but the model range is so important to Yamaha that yeah, you'll continue to see investment in those models in the future. Fantastic. Now I know you've just spent the last week on the MT10 SP that we've had out today. I thought it was rude, it was here, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it must be a tough job having that at your disposal, right? You've got to keep in touch with the product. And of course, you were very kindly giving me this for a year, and I have to give it back. And I don't really want to, but I also can't afford to keep it. Is there any fuel in it? Because I might just borrow that this evening. Thank you very much. It's been can, a pleasure working with you. Can I have my bits back, though? Well, I need, obviously, careful evaluating and testing from our side, so um, probably not. I guess that's a no. Thank you, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. Hi, guys. So we are just on the way back now from dropping off the MT-10, and it has been an amazing year. So. What I just wanted to do, just as we're driving back, not riding, is that depressing, is to just say a huge thank you to a bunch of people. First off, to SP Engineering for all the awesome exhausts we put on, including the last one we put on, which was the Diabolus, to Bike Sport Development for the Quick Shifter and Downshift Blipper, which is just awesome, to HPS for the Brembo RMT brake pads, which could possibly be the best mod that I put on there just because they stopped me quicker and they improved the, boat, the brakes massively. Um, of course we have Dynajet UK to thank as well for the power commander. 
and Bridgestone for the RS10s because they were awesome and prior to Bridgestone Pirelli for the Rosso, uh, the Rosso, no, the Rosso Corsa, Rosso Corsa, I thought, they were great. And finally to JHS Racing, obviously you saw how much they put into um, the MT10 this year. So that was amazing of them, all the work, all the diner runs, the static setup and just all the general kind of help. Massive thanks to Yamaha as well. And even the biggest thanks goes to you guys for watching the videos, for replying, for sending me emails, for getting in touch. You know, and some of you guys went and bought some of the stuff that we that the guys let us try and that's just that's fantastic. Thank you ever so much. That means you know we can do similar stuff in the future. Um, obviously I've just had the thing today with Johnny and Dave. Uh, Johnny is currently holding the camera, aren't you Johnny? Hello. Um, now Johnny, I did have a little question for you. Hang on. The screen's gone off, does that matter? No. Okay. No. Continue. I had a little question for you, John. Yes. Um, you said before when we chatted that you didn't quite get to say everything that you wanted to say about the MT10 SP. So I would like to invite you now to do that. Okay. Okay. Will the good folk be able to see the MT10 SP? I, uh, well, the good folk will be able to see, they've just watched the MT10 SP in this blog. Okay. And they've watched you riding it. Um, wheelie maybe or maybe not caught on camera um, and so I just wanted you to kind of because you said you wanted to get a couple of points across about it but we didn't manage to get it across in what we've seen just before so. well it was only because you interrupted me uh, when I was about to tell you that certain things are more important than others when it comes to rating a motorcycle oh I see so you're giving you were giving bigger weight to some to some of your ratings than others so wh which are the ones in particular do you think uh, the SP looks fucking brilliant it does yeah that paint job uh, just the way it's all set up, those lovely gold coloured, is, is there a word for that, gold coloured forks? Um, gold coloured forks. Okay, yeah, yeah. that. Um, just the whole, the whole aura of that machine, it looks so special. Mm. Um, that it makes it seem, well, not even reasonable value, it makes it seem like good value. Yeah. I, I, I will, I will grant you. I will grant you that. Um, I do love the look of the SP, and I, you know, I, I understand why Dave likes mine, and I kind of get that whole blocky transformy stuff. But you can't, you know, when you get the SP out, we're rolling the SP out of a garage. It looks special from the off. So, I, you know, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one, mate. Um, as for giving it extra weight, well, I think you know, I still want my MT to win. So technically, it's just one vote. Fair enough. But which one would you have as a gift? What, if money was no object? If money was less of, less of an object than a few thousand pounds here or there is currently the deal. I'd probably have the SP. And then do most of what I did to <laughs> mine to the SP. But, having said that, the SP is... My one is such good value for money when either new or even even second hand, if you can find on second hand, they're like gold dust at the moment, you can find on second hand. Oh, do you know, that's actually harder. I would have an SP. There's no two ways about it. I think it's a stunning thing. Um, it scored really highly in the test, naked test we did recently, and the Tuono pipped it, but the SP held its head high, and as a road bike, is probably a bit better. Um, you're nodding, you're nodding to that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably go for the SP, but I think the problem with my bike as a finished article is just very good. I mean, even though it's not electronic suspension, it's bloody good setup. And the Nitron shock is very good, and you almost don't miss the fact it's electronic. It doesn't quite have the magic carpet ride, but it doesn't matter. And my bike will outhandle the SP on track, I guarantee it, and not just because of the tyres. So, yeah, I won't lie, the SP is gold, it's Gucci, it looks beautiful, and I would probably have an SP if I could afford it and then throw a bit more money at it. But, I'm usually broke, so I'd probably have to still go for my bike. Sorry. But anyway, we digress. Thank you so much for watching all these videos. We will have plenty more on the new GSXR and other long-termers coming your way. And so for the moment, I'm going to say goodbye whilst looking in this direction so I don't crash into the car that just braked really. Oh, no, we're back and running now. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and keep watching the channel. We'll bring you some other cool stuff. Bye.